Well, it's already that time of year, you know, when we decorate our homes with ugly, terrifying Halloween decorations. I love it. Uh, I'll try not to be too distasteful, but there is just something strangely fun about having creepy things dressing up my home, even if it's only for one month. I enjoy the do-it-yourself projects more than anything, so I try to make a few things every year from home. Although I enjoy being all artsy and stuff, I also like quick and easy, because quick and easy is better for me in my time frame. <laughs> it should be fun, right? I've rounded up a few of my favorite do-it-yourself homemade Halloween decorations that the adults and kids will love. They are all pretty painless, but also very effective. So come take a look on the next episode of Elegance and Sophistication Halloween Edition. Okay, so I found this idea on Pinterest, and it was too awesome and easy not to try it. Cut some spooky eyes onto empty paper towel and toilet paper rolls. I chopped up a long wrapping paper tube myself. Insert a glow stick and cover ends with duct tape. I mean, that's as simple as you can get for a decoration. Then all you have to do is just hide them around the yard for some spooky Halloween decor. And happy haunting. Check it out here. Spooky. What better way to give your trees a little personality? The hardest part of this project is getting them up in the tree. That's what husbands are for. <laughs> but the rest is quick and easy. I bought two 20-inch beach balls and colored in eyes with a Sharpie. I used one of my bowls, dish, you know, like one of those mixing bowls, as the outline for the iris. We just happen to have a large tip Sharpie at home, so that really does help the project move along a lot quickly. Anyway, you pop them up in the tree with a little bit of twine to keep them from blowing away in a storm. And uh, I just adore how they turned out. I mean, it's unbelievable to me how much personality that eyeballs can give a tree. <laughs> I bought the beach balls online at beachballworld.com for only $2.95. Yes, $2.95 each. And I know that this, this, this video is probably going out late for October, so you won't get them in time, but you can always get them for next year. It's an awesome thing. It's cheap. It's fun. And just look at how much personality it gives the trees. Okay, so you've already, you've already got a lamp, so why not add a few silhouettes to spruce up your Halloween decor inside? It really doesn't get much easier or cheaper than this, and you probably already have the supplies on hand. And it's really easy. Here's how. I did it in under 10 minutes using stuff I already had around the house. A total cost of zero dollars. Come on. First, okay, I sketched out bat shapes, which I was inspired by a quick Google search on small white pieces of paper. Just all you have to do, you can fold them into rectangles. If you can cut the paper into like a rectangle shape of about the size of what you're working on, it's easier to cut out. But just, you know, anyway. So anyway, then I cut the sketches out and created little white stencils that I could trace with a pencil onto black construction paper. Now I had some black cardstock, which also works good if you have that laying around the house. But construction paper will do too. After they're traced, you can just simply cut them out and you're left with these awesome little bat-shaped pieces of paper just laying around. <laughs> now, I especially like that I got three different bat shapes. And you can do what you want, but I decided to do three. That way it just won't, you know, it just doesn't make it look so, you know, uniform. Then I just used two loops of scotch tape, one on each wing, to stick each one of them inside the two lampshades in our living room for a bit of an eerie ambiance when the lights are on. Of course, here's the obligatory warning. Okay, 
Make sure that they're firmly in place and nowhere near the hot bulbs so they don't start a fire. Now, if you have CFL bulbs, they burn a lot cooler, so it's a nice bit of added insurance. Oh, and we wondered if you'd see the tape through the shade, but you really don't. Just the silhouette of each bat. It's a super polished look for not much effort. I mean, you got to love that. And the funny thing is, is that when the lights are off, our linen shades make the bats completely invisible. So they look pretty run-of-the-mill. <laughs> Until you switch them on for some Halloween fun. I mean, I can't wait to have them glowing in our front window when trick-or-treaters approach on the 31st. It's like a modern take on carving a pumpkin. And adding an orange bulb would be the icing on the cake. My shades just happen to cast a yellowy, orangey glow as is, so I don't need them. But you can always get an orange bulb. Right now is the time to get them. October is the month, so get your orange bulbs for your lamps. Now, this is an entrance fit for Halloween. The project is fairly simple with very few supplies, but just look at how effective it is. When attached to an archway, it just gives the appearance that you're entering a monster's mouth. Very cool. I saw a fun idea for turning the front of your house into a monster on Pinterest. I knew right away I wanted to do something similar. So we got a lot, we get a lot of wind here in the evening, so I knew that we had to make it out of something sturdy. After looking around the hardware store, I decided on one inch foam board. I traced out the design on my t on the teeth and eyes and cut it out using using a blade of a handsaw. I then painted everything white using flat white paint. I added the eyes and teeth outlines using acrylic paint. And then we originally hung everything with nails, but the pieces blew down. So we rehung the pieces with longer screws, and the teeth have a board across the back to hold it tightly against the house. It has been fun to watch the car slow down in front of the house and check out the monster face. Okay, take a look. Now, my other new decoration this year was dug up skeletal remains. I had some skeleton pieces from last year, so this project didn't cost me anything. I used one of my old wheelbarrows and filled it with dirt. I threw a few leaves on top, but they quickly blew away in the wind, so I lost those. But I set the skeleton pieces in the dirt and leaned an old shovel against the wheelbarrow. It was easy to do and it looked great in the front yard. And I do hope that you have a spooky Halloween. And remember to keep it eerie and always spooky. <laughs> See you next time.